One of the greatest rivalries of World War II happened in the skies above Europe, when the German Messerschmitt Bf 109 and the British Spitfire fought for air supremacy. They both had their strengths and weaknesses, so let's see the brief history of these planes, their technical specifications and combat use to see how they compare to each other. To be able to compare the two fighters, first we need to take a look at their history a bit, to understand when and why they were developed. Though they came from different countries, there are a lot of similarities in the development of the planes. Both were designed initially as short-range interceptors and to similar requirements. Its history started in 1931, when the British Air Ministry started looking for a new fighter plane, capable of at least 250 miles an hour. The plane was designed by R. J. Mitchell as a short-range high-performance interceptor. But his design wasn't successful on the first try. The initial Type 224 looked very different from the later Spitfire shape. Only in 1934, after several improvements and receiving the brand new Rolls-Royce PV-12 engine, which later became famous as the Merlin, was the plane accepted. And this first flight happened in 5th of March 1936. The Spitfire was quickly acknowledged as a capable aircraft. Not perfect, but a very good base for additional development and improvements. As it turned out, it lived up to this promise, as it served all through World War II and became one of the best fighters of the era. It was developed in every aspect over the years, its frame, wings, engine and armament all changed over its lifetime, and its increase of performance and capabilities show how well designed aircraft it was from the beginning. As it received bigger and stronger engines, it required changes on the wings and control surfaces as well while the weaponry changed from the initial 7.7mm machine guns to 20mm cannons. Initially it was designed to be a good nimble interceptor to defend Britain, and this remained its main strong point all through its development. Similarly to its greatest rival, the Spitfire, the BF-109 was also developed in the mid-1930s and stayed in service all through World War II and even after. In some countries it was only retired in the 1950s and 1960s. It was the most produced fighter aircraft in history, with more than 34,000 airframes built until the end of World War II. In the early 1930s the German Air Force, just like in most countries, still used biplanes, like the Heinkel AG-51, but they started a modernization program in 1933. The Reich Air Ministry, RLM in short, outlined four future aircraft projects. One for a medium bomber, one for a tactical bomber, one for a single seat fighter, and one for a two-seat heavy fighter. The single-seat fighter was planned to be a short-range interceptor to replace the current biplanes in service, the Arado AR-68 and the already mentioned Heinkel AG-51. The requirements for the new fighter were 400 km an hour speed maintained at 6000 meters and a minimum flight time of 90 minutes. It had to reach the 6000 meters altitude in no more than 17 minutes and have a service ceiling at 10,000 meters. The minimum armament had to be at least two 7.92mm machine guns and the aircraft had to be powered by the Junkers 210 engines, but had to have provisions to mount the newly developed but not yet ready Daimler DB600 power plant too. The Messerschmitt entry for this competition was designed by Willy Messerschmitt and Robert Lasser. The first mock-up was completed in May 1934 and the first prototype was finished a year later, in May 1935, and received the designation BF-109 from the RLM. Before testing could begin, an interesting situation occurred. The prototypes from the manufacturers were done, but none of the German-made engines were ready. So the RLM acquired four Rolls-Royce Kestrel engines and gave them to the manufacturers. This led to the strange event that the British Spitfire's main rival in World War II made its maiden flight in late May 1935 while powered by a British Rolls-Royce engine. In March 1936, the RLM declared the BF-109 the winner of the competition, and this quick decision was caused by the news that the British had put the Spitfire in production earlier the same year. The first BF-109A variant was powered by the UMO 210B engines and was planned to just carry the original two 7.92 machine guns. But after the introduction of the new British fighters, the Hurricane and the Spitfire, each of them carrying eight machine guns, this was changed. The BF-109 had very thin wings, as they were not designed to carry armament, 
so it was decided a center-mounted third machine gun or cannon should be used, firing through the center of the engine. Both of the fighters were in continuous development during their life, so let's compare technical specifications, both early and late in the war. The first real clash of the two fighters happened during the Battle of Britain. The most numerous at this stage of the war were the Spitfire Mark I and BF-109E models. The Spitfire Mark I was 29 feet 11 inches long with a wingspan of 36 feet 10 inches, while the BF-109E variant was 28 feet 4.5 inches long with a wingspan of 32 feet 4.5 inches. The maximum takeoff weight was 5,935 pounds for the Spitfire and 5,875 pounds for the Messerschmitt fighter. The Merlin 3 engine in the Spitfire developed 1,310 horsepower using 100 octane fuel, while the Daimler DB601 engine in the BF109 had an output of 1,175 horsepower. Their maximum speed was comparable: 367 miles an hour for the Spitfire and 348 miles an hour for the BF109. And so was their service ceiling, which was 34,400 feet for the Spitfire and 36,500 feet for the BF109. But the Spitfire only had a climb rate around 2,500 feet a minute, while the BF109 was capable of 3,500 feet a minute. On the other hand, the Spitfire had a tighter turn radius than the BF109, so it had the upper hand in horizontal maneuvers. The Spitfire featured eight 7.7mm machine guns in the wings, while the BF-109 was equipped with two 7.92mm machine guns and two 20mm cannons. As the war progressed, both fighters were upgraded in all aspects, so let's take a look at the 1942 variants, the Spitfire Mark IX and the BF-109 G2. The Merlin 61 engine in this Spitfire version developed 1560 horsepower, while the BF 109 had a maximum engine output of 1475 horsepower. The two could reach almost the same maximum speed 408 miles an hour for the Spitfire at 20,000 feet, while the BF 109 could reach 398 miles an hour at the same altitude. With the new engine, the Spitfire had the higher service ceiling at 43,000 feet and only 39,000 feet for the BF-109. With the new Merlin engine featuring the two-stage two-speed supercharger in the Spitfire, the BF-109 didn't have an advantage in climb rate anymore, as the G variant had almost identical climb rate as the earlier variants at around 3,500 feet a minute. But with the new engine, the Spitfire could achieve 3,800 feet a minute. It also had an advantage over 20,000 feet, as the Daimler engine in the BF-109 with its single-stage supercharger struggled at higher altitudes. This version of the Spitfire featured four 7.7mm machine guns and two 20mm cannons, while the BF-109 was equipped with two 7.92mm machine guns and a 20mm cannon. We can see from the numbers that the new Merlin engines turned the tables, and with this upgrade the Spitfire became the more powerful fighter. The BF-109 saw combat early in the war. Actually, some of them already participated in the Spanish Civil War with the Condor Legion. During the Polish campaign and the Western campaign, they didn't meet any aircraft that could match the performance of these modern German fighters. But they have met the British Spitfires and Hurricanes at the end of the Battle of France, and especially during the Battle of Britain, and these fighters proved to be a match for the BF-109s. The British Spitfire had a tighter turn radius than the BF-109, and it was more nimble, but flown by a good pilot, the BF-109 still had advantages against the British fighter. It had a better climb rate, it was faster in a dive, and its fuel-injected engine was a big advantage in negative G maneuvers. The British fighters also had the luxury of fighting over their home country, while the BF-109s with their short range usually only had 10-15 minutes of fuel for dogfighting over Britain, before they had to turn back home. As to which fighter was better, in the end comes down to their ability to receive upgrades. In the early years, the BF-109 had the upper hand against the Spitfire Mark I, as it climbed better and had better performance in vertical maneuvers. 
This changed with the earlier mentioned Mark 9 Spitfires, which basically were rushed into service after the appearance of the new and very fast Focke-Wulf 190 fighters. With the new Merlin 61 engine, the Spitfire gained an advantage in performance over the BF-109, and they not only had better turn radius, but better climb rate and higher speed as well. The BF-109, though it featured many new technologies, like automatic leading edge slats, fuel injection on the engine, and automatic variable speed supercharger, but its small size and lightweight construction, which initially helped it to win the competition in 1936, on the long run restricted its upgrade potential, and unlike the Spitfire, it couldn't employ heavy armament or much stronger engine, though a big part of that was because of the failing German industry and the inferior fuel used on the German side. In conclusion, we can say the two fighters' purpose and development goals were fairly similar in the beginning, and they were quite evenly matched in their first clashes, but in the end the Spitfire's bigger development potential was the deciding factor between the two, as the British fighter was a better platform to upgrade and achieve higher and higher performance from the same basic design. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.